The little hand pointing at nine took me out. <laughs> Thank you. Took me out is is modern parlance for it. We had we we're it made you laugh, so I, I respect it. And we got the ten wins, so basically you can eat me. Look at that. How's your Twitter been lately? I don't have an account, so I can't see. Well, listen, nobody laughed when I made that tweet yesterday in during London. That was what if Judd Apatow wrote the script for uh, Oppenheimer. And then I tweeted it, and it has 3,000 likes, which is pretty good. It's not the best tweet I've ever had, but it's pretty good. What's the tweet? It says, square brackets, excerpt from Joss Whedon's unoptioned original script for Oppenheimer. Richard Feynman, um, guys, you're going to want to see this. Enrico Fermi, what is it, dick? Did you get another stripper pregnant? Richard Feynman, even worse, dot, dot, dot. I think I just invented the nuclear bomb. Now, I was also inspired. I'm in my Oppenheimer era. This one only got 950 likes. But I tweeted, sources are reporting the IMAX reel for Christopher Nolan's Oppenheimer clocks in at a whopping 11 miles in length. And then I, the picture that I put there was uh, the picture that everybody used when they were tweeting about the whale with uh, Brendan Fraser. Like, you know, I, I can't see myself in the preview window. You know the one, though. I thought that would be a good tweet, but it only got 950. But that's okay. I didn't get it. Well, so when The Whale originally aired at film festivals, like six months before its wide release, every single media outlet on earth posted something about The Whale every day on Twitter, and they always used the same photo. To the extent that it, the, the photo itself became a meme. Like, for example, there were tweets that were like, is this movie just one frame? Um, so I kind of, I brought it back, but people aren't ready for that one yet. That's okay. I'm sure if Kira tweeted it, it would probably have 51,000 likes, but whatever. It's not, it makes me want to throw up. Did you see the um, basketball? <laughs> Sorry, it's true though. Did you see the NBA tweet where they used AI to turn NBA superstars into um, women? And then someone quote tweeted it and said like, uh, Davina Booker and Dwighta Howard can get it. And then there's no Dwight Howard gender swap in the, in the images. <laughs> that was a good tweet. I wish I thought of that one. I, maybe that's my, my next social media era is becoming an NBA Twitter influencer. S tier arc. I mean, come on. Did you see Luka Doncic uh, touching the cones in the gymnasium? Like, I can't believe this dude is putting up 32 points a night on average in the NBA, and he's like performing worse than me in ninth grade gym class. Like, what is going on? I get that he's good at basketball. I'm just saying like, what is he doing? He's a center? Really? Cause like, he didn't look that tall. Note, editor's note, I know he's taller than me. He's not a center. See, I, I knew he was in a number five. I know that we have fluid positioning in the modern day game of basketball as a result of the rise of positionless basketball, but he's a point guard, which is even funnier. Well, you know what they say. What do they call a center? A uh, seven foot one point guard. All right, this one's already cooked and it sucks. So I'm going to just make an annoying team. And maybe they'll let us get, like, a, a head-empty bison. <laughs> oh, it could happen. It could happen! Bison. Oh! <laughs> Ooh. Luca looks unathletic, but he has a 42-inch vert. Is that supposed to be impressive? For all I know, I might have a 42-inch vert. I bought the buffalo instead of the bison. What have I done? <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. It's all right. It's all right. We can still make this happen. We just need a quick alpaca. NBA Twitter talk into the greatest blunder of the year. I, I hope that's the greatest blunder of the year. We still got a lot of year left, though. 
Probably greatest blunder of the year was saying I was going to play all of Final Fantasy 16. <laughs> it's a great game. It's just, I'm, uh, I just don't think I'm built for it, man. Have you seen the Margot Robbie discourse? The discourse that Margot Robbie is not attractive? I saw... Uh, yeah, I saw some of that. But I, it's, it's like one of my... I like when people on Twitter are like insane, but not like that. Like that's just, that's the worst part of Twitter, which is like one idiot getting quote tweeted 11,000 times for a take that only they have. Good Twitter is when somebody walks by a house that has skeletons climbing on it for Halloween and says, I'm not offended, but this would really offend someone who recently had like a relative die. Did you see the video of Simon Cowell giving you a quest to bring back a uh, Yellow flavor Listerine. I've run out of Listerine. This is the original. We don't sell it anymore in the UK. I don't know why, because it's the best. Could you please, please bring it back? I'm begging you. I gotta be honest with you. I, I knew Simon Cowell was an older man. I didn't know he was that old until I saw him whip out the yellow bottle of Listerine. I was like, really, man? Yellow bottle? I don't think I've seen a yellow bottle of Listerine since like the last time I was at my grandparents' house in the year 2000. Like you're not even, you never graduated to green Listerine. You just, you said yellow's good enough? I don't even know what flavor yellow is. I, I think it's just original. My dad says the other ones don't work. <laughs> That's so, he might be right. That's so funny though. My dad says the other ones don't work. Brown Listerine resets your whole mouth to factory settings. It's a plus two statement is all I'm gonna say about that. It's a very plus two-able statement. But what, what flavor is original? Because there's no such thing as original. Like, it depends on what it's an original of, right? So, like, it's got to have a flavor. What's the flavor? Chemical. 